Hey, what's up everyone? Happy New Year! First video of 2025. And today we're going to look at how we can update SharePoint items in multiple lists using a Power Automate flow that will be triggered from a Power App. So if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell. You know the drill. And I hope you enjoy. I'm in SharePoint and I have three different lists. I'm currently in my main list where I have a few items. Then I have list A with over items. And finally, list B again with some items. Now, the columns are different for each of the lists. And the scenario we're going to work with today is I can have the same item title in multiple lists, but I cannot have the same item title twice in the same list. If we go over to Power Apps, I have a very little app in here where I can see a gallery with all my items and this is connected to my main list. This is the only data source that is connected into my Power App. And I also have a pop-up. If I click on the Edit Pencil, I am setting two variables. The first one, is the title, which is the title of the item that I'm going to bring over into my pop-up and the var item ID, which I'm going to use in my patch function to update this item. If I play the app and I open the pop-up, I click on the icon. The formula that I have on the checkmark icon, so the validation icon, you can see that I'm just patching my main list with the new title that the user has entered in the text input. So now let's go and build our flow. I'm going to reduce that. I'm going to go into the three dots, Power Automate, and I'm just going to create my flow from here, create new flow, create from blank. I'm going to rename it now. And in our trigger, we're going to have two inputs. They are both going to be text. The first one is going to be the current title. And the second one is going to be the new title. And we could continue the flow in here, but we're going to need to test it multiple times. So before I can save the flow, I'm going to need to enter another step. I'm going to put something random in here just to be able to save the flow. And then I'm going to switch into the Power Automate portal to be able to continue with my flow. Now I'm in the Power Automate portal. I can see my flow. I'm going to edit it. And I'm going to have to switch into the old designer because I'm not fully sold on the new designer yet. So right now it makes more sense to me. I'm going to remove that action because I don't need it. And the first thing we need to do is to get all the list dynamically. So click on next step. We're going to use the HTTP action or the send an HTTP request to SharePoint. We're going to select our site. This is going to be a get method. And for the URI, we're actually going to filter a little bit. So what I'm doing here is I'm filtering against the hidden list because I know that my lists are not hidden. So pay attention if yours are in your scenario, you might not want to use this. Then the base template is equal to 100, which is the code for custom slash generic lists, because I know that my lists are with a base template of 100. And finally, because I know that the application is going to update the main list, I don't need to include it here either. For the headers, I'm going to put an accept. Let's rename this action. Save the flow. And let's test it manually, because that's the first time. And here it doesn't actually really matter at this point because we are not updating anything, but I'm still going to put like real data so we can use this trigger again. I'm going to copy that. 
and change the new title to just that. Run the flow. And if we look at the outputs, we should only see list A and list B in here because I've excluded the main list. So the first item in here in the outputs is our list A. And then the last one is our list B. Okay. Let's go back into edit mode. And now that we have all the lists, let's go over the items. So we're going to look for an apply to each. I'm going to rename that action. We're going to select the preview step, but that is going to be the value of the preview step. And then let's get the items. Let's select our site. For the list name, we are going to use the ID of the list because it's usually faster. So if you expand the menu, we're not going to choose list A, B, or the main list. We're going to enter a custom value. And for the expression, it's going to be the item from those lists, which is the output we get from the HTTP request. And we are going to select the ID. Now, the ID is in lowercase. This is very important. And click OK. And once again, we're going to filter the items that we want. If we click on Show Advanced Options, we have this filter query. And the dynamic content is giving us the current title. Because what we want to do here is get the items that match the current title that we had in Power Apps. So for the filter query, we're going to enter where the title is equal and open single quotes, go back in between the quotes and click on current title. Now let's save the flow and run it again. This time we're going to use our trigger. Success. Let's have a look at the outputs that we have. So we have two outputs. We have the ID number four with this title, which actually matched what we had. And if we scroll down a little bit, we can see that this is coming from list A, which if we go back into SharePoint, we go into list A, we can see in here that we have the Power Apps Fundamental. And then our second item is on list B. And indeed, if we go back to SharePoint, we can see that we have the Power Apps Fundamental. Again, we don't have anything from the main list because we've excluded earlier. Now, we could see that with the get items, we have loads of things that we don't actually need. So what we're going to do is we're going to trim a little bit more. After the get item, we're going to add a select action. And this is going to create a new array that we're going to be able to use with only the data that we want. The output for the select is going to be the value from the get items, which is this step. And then we're going to start mapping the data that we need. We're going to get the item ID and the item title. Because we are in a for each loop, the formula for the ID, we're going to go into expression and we're going to insert the item. But this time for the ID, we want the ID of the item. So this is going to be ID but in uppercase. Next, we're going to take the item title and it's going to be similar to this item and the column name is title. Let's save it. And at this point, now we want to update the item with the new title. After the select, we're going to insert an apply to each again. The output 
in that case, is going to be the output from the select. I'm going to rename this action. And it's time to update the item. Now, like I said at the beginning, the columns are not the same. And the only thing we want to update is the title. So let's use again an HTTP request to SharePoint to update the items. Let's select our site. This time, this is going to be a post method. The URI is going to be a little bit dynamic. What we've got here is we're going to get each list by ID. We used the ID before, so we know what it is. And then for the items ID, this is coming from all the items that we have and from the select action. As you can see, I have item ID. And one thing to pay attention to is, I don't know if you see uh, probably in here, but when you get the list by ID, there is single quotes in here, but there is no quotes whatsoever for the item ID. Okay. Sometimes when your flow fails, it's because you forgot the single quotes. For the headers, we're going to have a couple of headers. And if we look at the documentation, when we want to update a list item, you can see we have the if match, we have the HTTP method and the accept header. And then finally, for the body, we're going to open curly braces. And here, we want to update the title, double quotes, title, and then again, double quotes, go back in the middle. And this time we are going to choose the new title from the dynamic content. And now we are done. Let's save the flow and go back into our Power Apps. We're going to refresh the flow. Then in the confirmation icon, that's where we are going to insert our flow. Update SPO list item. And then here, as you can see, we're going to need the current title. In that case, this is our variable. And the second parameter is going to be the new title. Now, the new title will be coming from the text input dot value. Let's close this. We're going to save. And now it's time to give it a try. So let's play the app and let's change this one, for example. So remember, the goal is that the app is going to update the main list and then the flow will trigger and update any other item in the other list from this title to the new title. Click on edit. I'm going to change the title to SharePoint for admins. And we're going to click on OK. Now we can see it's updated in here. If we go into SharePoint, I'm going to refresh. And it's updated in here, SharePoint for admins. We had it in here as well, so on list A. And then we also had it on list B. So if we go into Power Automate, and if we look at the flow, we can see 30 seconds ago. Let's have a look at the items that we had. And this time, we can see that it has been changed to SharePoint for admins. Let's try another one, but this time let's pick something different. For example, we had um, this one, the Copilot Studio for Beginners is only in the main list. No Copilot for Beginners in here and nothing in here. So let's change this one, the Copilot for Beginners. Going to go into Power Apps, Edit. And we're going to change that to Copilot. We'll change that to Copilot Tutorial for Beginners. Click on OK. Change in here. 
go back into the main list, refresh, and it has changed in here. And if we look at the flow, we can see success 10 seconds ago. But let's look at the output for this one. When it comes to the items, there was nothing to update and the flow didn't fail. It only updated the main list, which is done via the Power Apps. And that's it. Thanks very much for watching.